What up, cuz? Happy full moon in Libra. I was like, what part of the moon cycle are we in? Oh, uh, as uh, per our card on Friday, it's been like super eight of wandsy all weekend, which basically means like everything's moving fast. You're like hauling ass to and fro. It's just like running amok, uh, but also like getting downloads and like you're super busy, but it's like positive busy, very fiery, very manic fire energy. <laughs> So I've been in manic fire energy and it's, I've had Passover. I was like rushing around trying to get the traditional foods for Passover, which I always come up short and wanting around here. But I was able to like, I don't know, throw some things together. I went to King Solomon's for um, the lamb gyro meat or hero meat. And it was a good, it was a good, uh, Good idea. And then I got, ch I needed a bone. So I got chicken thighs and I painted them with a dark cherry spiced preserve. And then I put r fresh rosemary, thyme, and sage, and then like drizzled with balsamic and like hunked in a bunch of garlic. And that was really good. So that served as my bone. And then I had to roast some eggs, which was weird, but like they turned out good. And I did, um, you have to have apples. So I did some apples with red wine and baking spices, like sugar, allspice, nutmeg, cinnamon, and then uh, walnuts, macadamia nuts, cashews, and pistachios. I went with like the good Middle Eastern, like uh, opulent nuts. And then I did, um, I did have olives. Those are always good to have around, but there's a whole bunch, whole story about that that I'm not gonna get into. And then you have to have, uh, so endives or romaine lettuce for bitter greens for the bitterness of slavery. Um, the egg, I think is about the rebirth, the new life, but don't like quote me on that. I need to go back and read it again. Like I read all of this in a hurry. And then the, um, the horseradish was like the pain and the, um, you had to do parsley in warm salt water. I used King David's kosher salt. Um, and that was, that's the tears of the Hebrew people. So those like all the traditional foods were there. Um, but then you also have to drink, oh my God, by order of decree, four glasses of wine. And that's just, that's a lot for me. Just, you know, and like one like fell swoop on an empty stomach. And so I'm just like, kind of hung over today and I'm, I feel I feel betrayed because it was I was keeping mitzvah but now I'm hung over from mitzvah so but we're gonna do this and I have to go to work this afternoon and I've got to get my taxes done this weekend and Easter's tomorrow but I'm strong and I'm carrying on and I'm excited because the new moon in Aries has been like fiery and passionate and been loving it and y'all been feeling fun and full of yourselves good because, yeah, Aries is all about <clears throat> the identity and who is the self. And the Aries is also the baby. So the journey of the Aries is to learn who the self is, but to learn how to um, overcome the selfish, you know, immature and impulsive uh, tendencies that is Aries. And to hopefully tame the temper of Aries, but channel it into more of like your motivation and determination. And so now we have, and because Aries was in a new moon, it was like kind of the darker shadowy side of things. So you've been challenged during, if you watched yesterday's video, we learned that Pesach is um, uh, th these, these days leading up to the culminating Passover Seder um, that were the 10 plagues of Egypt. So those were all challenging days and it's no coincidence. So we were challenged uh, by way of the, the shadow side of Aries. So hopefully you've uh, you made it to the other side. Uh, yeah, so everything culminated. The final plague uh, was when the death angel went over Egypt and took a firstborn son of every household. And so the Israelites painted their doorway with lamb's blood, which protected them from the death angel, and then they had to scoot, and so they weren't allowed to have any leavened bread. And at the time, in, uh, so like everything always has layers of meaning. So you see how it like has context in the physical story. And then you see how there's like this metaphorical meaning in the parable. parable. Um, and then you see how it applies kind of like to the story of your, your life. And then there's like a deeper meaning which kind of like helps you through maybe emotional turmoil or confusion. But then there's always a deepest level, which is like the metaphysical 
um, mystic level of things. So there's a reason why during the time of Pesach, they were not eating leavened bread, and it's because the yeast in the bread that makes it rise um, is, 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 I don't know if it's sugar, or if it's like like sugar or whatever it is, the ego, it represents in physical uh, representation, the ego, the way the ego expands, the way the ego, you know, rises and, and, and wants to be, you know, more important, right, correct, attached to the truth, like its truth and not the universal truth. Uh, the ego, you know, digs his hills in. The ego, instead of doing a 180, does a 360 and doubles down. Um, the ego is self-defeating. The ego is self-inflating. The ego um, doesn't know how to share with others. The ego is so preoccupied with, you know, what it wants for itself that it almost... It, it, it's neglecting the challenge of learning who is the self, right? So we want to learn who the self is and heal the ego and integrate it in a positive way. And so during that time, um, the energetic opponent can feed on the energy of the... Um, the ego, the symbolic ego that lives in like the yeast of the bread, right? So we cut that out and we abstain from it. And I didn't know this, but I was like eating pizza and like five macaroni and cheese all week. And pasta is like crazy. And I had no idea that I was like creating chaos by doing this. But that's why like probably when I made my pizza, I burnt my arm really bad on the, on the, uh, the door. It's probably because it was like, you're not supposed to be eating. I was like, I didn't know. I didn't know it went on. It extended that long. So, so back to, okay, what we were talking about, which is the shadow side of Aries and the new moon, right, was blocked from the light of the sun. And so that block made it so that even though at that point in the moon cycle, which re the moon represents us, the vessel, we can only gleam the amount of light that we are in alignment with without blocks, right? So during the new moon, we're completely aligned, but 100% blocked by that shed and, and, and casting a shadow. And so what we need to do in that dark void is to discover what is blocking this and work during that waxing phase to bring in the light and to build the vessel that will earn the light that we can keep that energy, that blessing. And so the energy and the blessing of Aries is to have more independence and interdependence and know who we are and, and know what is authentically us and know what isn't us, and know what's good for us and what isn't. And, and to be able to overcome the temptation to be like super impulsive. Like I know just as a person, I, my driver's ed teacher, like his like note to me was full speed ahead. Like it was just like that was what he wrote on my report card. And that's true. I mean, fire, Aries, it's the first spark that sets off the whole astrological cycle of life, you know, it kind of mimics that beginning spark that set off, you know, creation itself. So blah, very impulsive, very wanting to like, just go, you know, in a million miles a minute, a million different directions. So it's, it helps Aries um, or people like going through lessons under the influence of Aries to slow down and try to resist being impulsive. And just try to use your free will to consciously make the choices that you're making and not be reactive. And so that's how you earn the vessel to keep the light instead of having like instant gratification by reaching for like that that toy or whatever or the 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 pacifier to you know numb the pain or whatever it is. Instead of being impulsive, we learn okay, if we're gonna make a free will choice and be as divine as we are human and choose, choose wisely, then we can't be impulsive. We have to take a minute and, and consider and then use our sovereignty, right? So once we learn how to do this, we have to integrate it within our environment with the other people. It's like we would all be in good shape if it weren't for the other people, right? It's always all the other people. They're so exacerbating. So in Libra, the lesson of Libra that we're learning that's coming into full light and we're coming into alignment with is how to maintain our individuality 
while also knowing how to integrate unity um, as in, in a balanced way in our relationships with others, right? So, and, and the relationships with the major like cornerstones of our life. Are you balanced in work and your enjoyment in life? You don't have to have equal sides of the scales. What feels balanced for you? You know, when we're balancing, <clears throat> If we get too stagnant, then the universe is going to send us some chaos to shake things up with turbulence so we can up level. So we want, you know, when we're balancing and we want to be there for a minute and play in that, in that, at that level, what we want to think of is like a unicyclist, you know, has to go back and forth, like a juggling unicyclist. So you're kind of dancing and playing with the energies and it's going back and forth. So maybe for you to find your bliss point, to find the point where you're most at the top of your game, you may have a lot more time off, but you may be able to like make your work time all the better and more proficient because of the time that you spent just filling your tank, right? Or, you know, the amount of time you spent, you know what I mean? Like you don't have to go 50-50. What makes you thrive? That is what you're getting to know. And then how are your relationships with the people at work? Is it an equal give and take? Um, are you able to maintain a balance or are you letting them have an effect on you? So you want to be sovereign and you want to be able to choose the kind of interaction that you have no matter what they're like. We want to become more the, like the light. So we want to be in a state, in an eternal state, which means a continuing constant consistency, um, not affected by outside, like we're the moon. So the moon waxes and wanes and goes through cycles and that's what we're supposed to be like. But we strive, and it's good for us to strive to be more, um, more constant, where we choose how we want to feel, how we want to um, interact with each other. If you are not meeting someone in their frantic energy, you can actually shift the, the, the tone of the situation. You can like create your reality. You just have to have like enough control over yourself to be in in the moment, aware of what's going on and to be like, okay, well, how do I want to steer this situation for the good of everyone involved and like, you know, have, not get into a bunch of drama, right? Um, not let other people affect your mood, not let other people affect um, your decisions so much that it's out of balance. But you also want to, um, it's like, how do I, set my boundaries, you know, and, and stand in my sovereignty, but also share with others, take others into consideration, you know, set the boundary and stand up for myself, but also like be compassionate and forgiving, generous of spirit. And so, you know, this is a dance that we're, that we wrestle with, like for all of life. And it, once we're not wrestling with it, then there's nothing for us to do here. So be glad that you, be glad for the struggle because it means you breathe in. Um, yeah, anything else about Libra? Oh, Libra is about pairing. It's about finding balance. It's about equal give and take. It's about uh, duality, partnership, justice. Um, in the Hebrew culture, justice meant that there was enough to go around for everyone, that everyone was taken care of. So everything was orderly and fair and goodly. Like in like King Arthur's kingdom, like where like there wasn't really poverty. Like everybody like we're in different stations and, and different whatever, but they all like everybody's taken care of. And so it created a sense of unity and harmony. So, and that, and, and that's what Libra is all about, harmony. But the downfall of Libra is that Libra can be very indecisive because they can kind of see all points because their tendency is to weigh the facts. Like, like the judge, justice is blind. They listen to both sides and, and weigh, and weigh them out. So you're used to saying, well, I can see the benefits of this. I can also see the cons of this. I can see the benefits of this. Like, oh my gosh, everything is at stake. Everything is a life-changing decision. You're like, I don't know what I'm in the mood to eat. Please, you take the lead. <laughs> uh, um, it's all too much. It's all too much. Yeah, so Libra, the shadow side could be like, ooh, it's hard to make a decision. And so that's one of the things that you have to correct. You have to rise above that. You have to become more decisive. Um, and so you learn how to um, share, but also be 
enough in your own sovereignty and enough in your own worth where you're not making every decision trying to make everybody else comfortable. You can own your decision by being an ev elevated Aries, right? Elev like the balance of Aries and Libra is stand on your own two feet, be, you know, have backbone, be able to take, you know, up for yourself, be able to defend it like yourself, but don't be too stubborn. Don't double down, like be open to, you know, change. Uh, but also, yeah, know who you are and own it. And, but also, you know, be able to work with others, be able to have positive, um, honest, open communication with others. And sometimes that's hard because as a Libra, you're very empathic and you want to make sure that everyone is feeling, you know, equitable and comfortable. And so you spend a lot of, you know, your energy kind of empathically trying to make sure that everybody else is okay. And it's a challenge for you to be more like Aries and be more selfish. <laughs> so I'm an Aries, Sun sign, Libra, Rising, Cancer, Moon. So I'm just like torn apart every which way all the time. <laughs> so psychic, so empathic. It's hard for me not to be selfish and it's hard for me to be selfish at the same time. So I'm just like, you're tearing me apart, Lisa. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I think. That is pretty much all she wrote, at least on that. And I think we should get into the reading. We're going to do a Celtic cross with the straightforward oracle. And then I'll pull a few tarot cards and a few oracle cards. Woo! Who's excited? Me. All right. Who are we in this moment? Oh, bad advice. Okay. Someone around you is trying to give you advice. Their advice may seem logical, but it is wrong for you. Don't take it. Um, hate is, hate is gonna hate. And we've been walking um, through these last 40 days and through the journey of the season with Jesus. So it only makes sense that you might come face to face with some kind of like person who is uh, trying to make you feel bad about yourself or something. And they're trying to basically like all the good things that are happening like the opponent like one of the challenges of the next 49 days is to remember that you're being challenged right so the opponent's going to show up and is going to make you think that you're being um you're being unreasonable you're not like what you your heart is guiding you has been guiding you in the right direction and it's going to make you question it and someone maybe tries to give you advice or tell you you're wrong or tell you that, you know, everything that's, you know, whatever was because of this. And just, just feel how wrong it feels when they say it. And don't let it get underneath your skin. In fact, just be on the lookout for somebody to, to try to come shit in your cereal. To try to come make you question and think, oh, maybe this isn't going to work out. Maybe I was deluded. Maybe I was like a fool and they were right all along. No, that is the trick. Don't fall for it. Bad advice. Oh, oh my God. Oh, on the bottom, we have trusted advice. So that confirms for me, crossing us now, that what we just said is right. That there is somebody who's coming with like some shitty message. It's like the dog shit on the flaming dog shit on the front porch. Don't listen. Focus on gratitude. Okay. So. The, the, the subconscious influence right now that is having the most effect on you is focusing on all the gratitude within you that is so grateful to see that all the seeds that you've been planting, like there are signs of growth. And you are not getting ahead of yourself and you are not being irresponsible for getting excited. You are being actually elevated by being excited. So focus on the gratitude. The gratitude is what's making everything else more magnetic and more focused and higher vibration to make you like bringing in all the goodness that's been coming in anyway. So like the ego is always going to try to creep in and ruin it for you and just be on the lookout. It's going to happen and get ready and put post-its everywhere if you need to, to remind yourself not to like short circuit. Pause. What a pleasure. Why is this in my movie? Restrict, don't react, proactively choose. Okay, so what is in the past that is still affecting us 
in this moment? What energy from the past is still having an effect? Okay, so you are in scarcity mode. So the, um, the devil will come and try to tempt you with fear, lack, and doubt. And we were talking about this, I believe, in yesterday's video. But um, you should never take any action in a state of fear, lack, or doubt because what you are touching will be poisoned. It is like the opposite of Midas touch. It will just shrivel up and be just tainted. So do not do anything from scarcity mode. Um, if you have scarcity mode happening and you catch yourself thinking, I am not enough, I don't have enough, I don't have what I need to do this or whatever, or it's never gonna happen, or you know, anything that feels, that makes you feel a sense of um, anxiety and desperation and, and, a, and an urge to want to reach or like uh, chase uh, or feel neurotic or something slipping from your grips, don't react. Everything is fine. It is only an illusion. This is part of the avatar. This is part of the video game. This is what we should expect. This is the training people. We're going over the plan. <laughs> I feel like I need one of those boards, the cork boards with like all the evidence and like play by place. Ooh, okay, lots of big, big spill here. So we're just gonna have to gather these up. Mix them back in, it's too much, too much. Ugh, I have a lot of people living in here. If y'all like, I don't know, these days it's so like, can you do accents? I don't know, it's probably just tasteful, but it's always been part of me. Like I really feel like there's a bunch of people just like living and waiting like for their time to like make comments. So not apologizing. Find a coach or teacher. Okay, so what's crowning you? Um, more study is needed, apprenticeship, enthusiastic student, continued education, training, and mastering a skill. So whatever is coming into your life right now, you have such an opportunity to learn and grow and expand and master your skills and your self-mastery um, of yourself and, and life through this. Uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea to open yourself up to have the universe present you with a teacher or a coach or just look for um, Start doing research. Uh, look for good teachers. Look for people who are engaging that hold your attention that you kind of vibe with or whatever because it's a good time to do it. And also this reminds me of Eight of Pentacles, which is about like a lo like long-term projects that like you, it's like you're always the student, the student of life, the apprentice of life, whatever. It's like the self-mastery that it's like you're in no rush. It's, this is like a slow process that is going to be um, a, a like a building over time. Uh, what's ahead of us? Let go of control issues. It's like the only card we ever get. Yeah, the only thing that is going to bottleneck your traffic at this point is like the ego, the scarcity, and the and the like holding on with to the illusion of control, which is what you try to do when you're in scarcity mode. So let go of that pre-programmed patterning of trying to like Quickly try to troubleshoot the, situa troubleshoot the situation so you can bring things under control. Don't get in the universe's way. Sometimes things are, they look as though they're coming apart at the seams, but it's the universe like taking down that backdrop and like changing shit out. Like, so don't worry, just trust. That's part of surrendering. That's part of certainty. Certainty isn't being so sure of yourself and all this and I'm not going to be changed. It's like, no, you're malleable. You're able to let go and go with the flow and trust that like something is in control because you're certainly not. You All you can do is just try to find like the tides and steer your ship in course with those tides, right? Or the drift or the, the current, the current, yes. <laughs> so you won't drift, but otherwise it's like you, it's a dance. You're not in full control. Um, but then again, you have free will. So you kind of are, it's up to you to drive, right? Drive the car. Um, okay, so what part of our perception is affecting our situation the most right now? Um, ooh, early childhood fear, okay. So this is inner child healing time, which completely makes sense. Um, pretty much everything that we are experiencing always is tied to early childhood trauma and early childhood fear. Um, this behavior is a direct result of childhood trauma. 
This is a defense mechanism connected to the event in childhood that made you feel threatened, abandoned, neglected, or not valued. You reach for this behavior in an attempt to comfort your inner child, but this is a behavioral pattern that keeps you stuck. This is a false sense of security, a prop or crutch. This is making you numb, leaking your energy, keeping you in a subconscious cycle of the child always in trauma. You must go back in time and face the memory of the event. How did it make you feel? How is that feeling similar to the, to the ones you feel now? Replay this memory, but change it. Rescue your child self. See your child self handling or confronting the situation with all the strength, wisdom, and sovereignty um, and self-worth and consciousness that you have now. So yes, right now the best course of action for you is to do um, subconscious work by getting in a hypnotic state and going back into early childhood um, memories. And if you invite your soul forth to like show you the stuff that usually will you just have to get into um, a very meditative state and literally the to be magnetic um website like you have to be a member or whatever i think to get access to like all the different uh deep imaginings but they're literally designed to take you through like stuff like that and their workshops so highly recommend not affiliate okay how is your outside environment affecting you how are others affecting you right now what effect are they having Ooh. Uh, needs more planning, hurt feelings. Oh, God. Okay, so I don't know. Somebody that is sort of harsh is probably like what were we were just talking about that confrontation might happen. So, yeah, just be prepared that somebody need, might need hurt your feelings. Um, someone has hurt your feelings or you have hurt theirs. What is the lesson? Make amends and forgive. Or it could be that because, you know, we're all going to see family soon um, over this uh, holiday, or a lot of us might, maybe somebody hurt your feelings and maybe you're not like in a hurry to go hang out with them. But like this guy, Alex Kip, I think is his name. He wrote this really, really awesome uh, post about Jesus um, and knowing that like he was going to be betrayed and denied, he still went and broke bread with the people you know, who were about to like sell him out and still was like there unconditionally in a loving state and just sort of like put that aside in that moment and forgave them. And so, yeah, a lot of us might have to break bread with people that we don't really want to sit across from um, this weekend. But yeah, I think that the more we can put our ego aside, the more we can even do it, even though it's not fair, even though it's painful, even though it makes us die a thousand deaths, that's what's being asked. That's the sacrifice, sacrificing of the ego that has to happen. And so hopefully you're not getting your feelings hurt again, but if somebody tries to hurt your feelings, just don't react. Um, don't take it in, don't listen to what they're saying. And maybe you can just excuse yourself from the situation and retreat and not expose yourself to it, but you have to show up and meet halfway and just be there and be neutral and forgiving. But if they, man, if they try to step, then, then you're just gonna go ahead and leave. Um, okay. So nine is, um, wishes and fears. We got, you need a partner. A partner will help you take this further, share the load, get help. People with complementing skills, incorporating a supportive element. So this is awesome because this is about partnership. It's about Libra. It's about um, sometimes in life our lessons are solo and we have cycles of being on our own and walking the path alone. And then at other times um, the universe brings people to us that we walk the path with. Um, that we need to mirror um, certain things or to maybe they're very nourishing, maybe they're helping replenish, uh, maybe they're expansive, or maybe they're challenging, but in a positive way. Uh, sometimes we're paired up with people that are challenging in a negative way because we have to like, you know, experience that too. Um, and, the, you know, it's, it's a mixed bag, but I feel like 
the balancing of the scales, I feel like we're always like, no, I don't want to balance the scales because we always think it's going to be like, you know, like worse. <laughs> but maybe if we've had it like terrible for a while, the scales are going to be in our favor and we're going to get a lot of great things. And so right now it's like, hey, whatever you're doing, like don't take it all on yourself. Like you can have a partner in this um, um, or you're ready for, you know, to learn more through a partnership than you are alone. Graduation, yay, I love this for the final outcome, Grad uh, graduation. Major healing, lesson embodied, wholeness, next level of, of evolution and successful finish. You have reached a successful completion and a natural ending has come. There is nothing more that can be learned, gained, or given through this relationship, job, or circumstance. It is time to make a, a dignified, respectable, and loving, graceful exit. To stay any longer will cause stagnancy. Um, allow bittersweet emotions to wash through. Uh, face them head on. Fill them fully. Voice how you feel out loud to yourself and radically accept the inevitable pain that you will have. Um, oh, the inevitable pain. Um, Accepting the inevitable pain will help you stay strong in your decision and conviction to move forward. No hard feelings, new beginnings. And I think that this is perfect for like the crucifixion resurrection theme because I think this graduation is talking about saying goodbye to the old self that we've been, to the experiences that we've had, to all of the things that never really played out the way they should have, that didn't really deliver what they said they would. Like that experience of everything being like, fuck like this again what's the point over over and done with it is a new day things are different new seeds have been planted and new life is cultivating and growing so things are changing for the better the up level is happening and what feels right and good and like what makes you feel like you're coming to life just keep following that and things that um just make you feel like all the gross, dark, awful, you know, wrong bells going off, don't waste your time there anymore. Um, and if, they're, it's, if it's with people that are unavoidable, then give them what you can as like a minimum and then, and then cut and run and get out. Like be, do the dutiful thing, but don't overstay. Okay, what do we have? Let's just do, let's do four tarot cards to give us um, uh, whoo, to round this off. So we have Page of Pentacles. This is an enthusiastic student who takes their time, goes slow, does the incremental study instead of cramming all at once. So this is a very uh, detail-oriented person, individual, someone who's excited about starting a new project but has a lot to learn ahead of them but is a good and dependable, like solid um grounded person but they're building foundations and this is the beginning um ooh, we have five of pentacles and eight of wands Ooh, let's see what the last one is to have more context around that okay six of pentacles all right so so what we're learning here as the page of pentacles what we're learning how to embody is overcoming this feeling of spiritual poverty the sense of scarcity mode which is the five of pentacles this is us thinking we're not enough. We don't have enough. Um, this is the pattern that we've been having so far. And it's sort of like this subconscious like uh, tone that is influencing the rest of the situation. So the lesson here is to overcome this. The downloads are coming in with the eight of wands and we're moving forward out of this pattern very quickly into a balanced state of six of pentacles where we're, we're, we're giving and receiving with more equality. We're having forward momentum and we're being charitable with others. And then we're having like surprise bonuses come to us from the universe as well. All right, let's do romance angels. Four from the romance angels to see how our love life is going to be for the next couple of weeks or what we need to look out for. Oh, here we go. Healing family issues. So if anything has effects on our partnership, it's family issues. And if you want to start something new and fresh in this like beginning of the year, this astrological year, then maybe do some like uh, a little bit of spring cleaning with healing family issues and that inner child trauma um, probably directly correlates with the hurt, uh, hurt feelings. 
And oh, the what came up next to hurt feelings, and that was the outer things influencing us, was it needs more planning. So something practical in your life right now needs a little bit more planning and more detail to get ironed out. Um, details, research, strategy, building foundations, um, well thought out, slow but practical action steps, methodical, focus, clarity, sharp intention. So everything here is like great things are happening, start moving forward, but take your time and go like slowly. Slow and steady wins the race. Um, okay, what next? What else do we need to know? It's going to help us keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from the usual type or expectation. Reconciliation. Someone from your past is returning to your life. Okay, so maybe you have a past life relationship with someone, or maybe there's literally someone from your past that's like coming back in. And, you know, the new start is like, there's a new start, but you have to kind of put aside what was, you know, just be fresh, like clean slate. Uh, so heal family issues. Keep an open mind. Um, like we said before, when the universe sends you like uh, turbulence and detours, there's something going on at play. Maybe you're cleansing some negative um, energy that you had built up. Maybe you're making space, making a void for what you want to come in. So keep an open mind and don't, um, don't get too uptight or too rigid or too um, worked up about anything. Um, reconciliation. So something is coming back together. We were having like messages the other day from this deck that there was separation. And so that's kind of what you want. You don't want this all the time. That is just stagnant, right? It's, it's more like this, right? This just leads to that. You know, it's like bad situation. Like this, this is what you want. So separation, reconciliation. It's like breathing, right? In, out. Um, let your friends help. Ask for and accept support from others. So yes, you know who your trusted confidants are who have a balanced perspective of the situation. So trust them. When the hurt feeling hurter comes up and they're like trying to like shit in your cereal, go to like that person that you always lean on that tells you the truth, but also like sees the best of you and sees you for real. And don't don't listen to like whatever is like tied to that childhood trauma and like family healing. And that friend can probably help you heal the family trauma also. So let's do one moon card. One moon card. Oh, I feel like it's this one. What is this? Don't let your past hold you back. South node. Okay, cool. So we're letting go of our past. We're letting go of that old scarcity mode that we weren't enough, that we needed to be something else. Never let that hold you back again. Um, you are a new person every day. You are growing into more of a complex multi-dimensional human being every day. Your consciousness is expanding every day. Your heart is opening and healing every day. Never look back. Looking back just turns you into a pillar of salt. A pillar of better salt. Move forward. Um, we have king of swords, which means that you might be getting too much in your head and getting a little bit too cerebral, but also you're getting a lot of clarity, and so that's giving you a lot of authority over your life which might make you want to fortify yourself and avoid feeling because you feel like everything is stable and like balanced now and you're afraid to go back into an unbalanced state. But now the self mastery is to use the work that you've done to maintain balance while feeling the emotions. The downside of the king of swords is that he's so cerebral that he also has no like sexual like magnetism either so he's not romantic he's just always so like sterile you know he's not passion not passionate but he's a good leader he knows you know he's he's got clarity he's got authority but use that authority in a way to direct you towards your passion, towards the joy, towards the life that you want to be creating instead of fortifying yourself from it. Okay, we're at 41 minutes. I really hope I can export this video. <laughs> Happy full moon in Libra for the next 49 days. Don't let yourselves be triggered, please. It's testing time. All right, you guys. Love you. Bye.